All right, good afternoon, everyone. We still have everyone on. Okay. And uh, so we have not had anyone show up to the meeting. This is our public informational meeting for the Cyclochem uh, pre construction air permit for the proposed new containment building unit. Um, no one? But that was an employee that came in. Here we go. No one has showed up at the meeting here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the presentation now for, I guess, for David, really, your, your um, benefit. Anybody else that might be on uh, Zoom that is an attendee right now, we don't have any. Um, and then uh, after we get, we get done with that, I'm going to have a point where I can allow the, the slides show to continue to, to run. So if anyone jumps on to the, uh, uh, to the Zoom meeting at that time, um, they're still going to have some information in front of them. As soon as we see anybody joining the meeting or showing up at the um, uh, venue that we have here, then we will add, uh, we'll stop the meeting, you know, restart back again, and I'll, I'll redo the presentation. So um, that'll be our prep for uh, for today. Can somebody unmute uh, David? Yes. Okay, Michael, uh, that, that's that's great. Proceed as just as you described. Um, it, it, you can record it, obviously, you should record it, and that'd be part of the public record, and we'll retain it. But yes, um, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, and uh, we're all ears. So thank you. Okay, so we are recording right now on the Zoom meeting, so everything's being recorded as we speak. Next slide. Okay, so next slide. So again, um, we're walking through a project overview summary uh, today of the application that's in. While um, we'll talk about primarily um, the air permit application, uh, the, the air permit application is actually uh, part of a number of other applications which we'll talk about here. Um, so there's an overall project um, that's a little bit larger than just the air permit that we're going to talk about what's going on at the facility. Um, next slide. Okay. So, Site Kim Inc. has proposed a number of new um, practices, items that they are seeking to implement at their facility uh, related to putting in some environmental improvements and increasing existing uh, upgrades of the existing equipment and information for protection at, at their solid hazards waste facility. To the enhance the environmental controls and to provide protection features as part of the facility to have improved worker and public health safety as well as providing additional, um, reducing additional impacts of the facility on the surrounding community. Excuse me, you need to speak towards the mic. <clears throat> Remove the mic up near you. So uh, implement these uh, proposed um, improvements and enhancements at the facility. Um, Secchem's applied for several new and uh, modified existing permits uh, from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. So primarily one of the ones that they've asked for is for their solid waste permits, um, solid hazardous waste permit to be modified. Uh, it's called a class three modification, the level of uh, the modifications that are being done. Um, we have a request in for a new pre-construction air permit, uh, a land use flood hazard area permit, which is a new permit that's been already issued to the facility. And we have a request in to modify um, the existing stormwater discharge permit for this location. Next slide. 
So as I indicated at the beginning, a significant part of the plan uh, facility enhancements activities uh, involve the construction uh, of an enclosure around an existing um, process and storage area at the facility uh, and which requires need for a new air permit. The filing of the pre-construction application for this particular facility is subject to the new expanded public participation requirements specified by the New Jersey DEP under administrative order number 2021-25, or what we call AO25, since the site chem facility is located in an overburdened community based on the determinations identified on NJDEP's Office of Environmental Justice website. As required under the AO25 standard, uh, a newspaper notice of this application was published on November 10th, 2021, uh, which initiated a commencement of a 60-day public comment period for the application. Under the expanded public participation requirements, members of the overburdened community are provided the opportunity to submit both written or verbal comments on the proposed project or permit activity. Next slide. The written comments can be directed to either David Pepe in the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, or to myself, Michael D. Logan at Compliance Plus Services as the technical consultant for Cyclechem Inc. During today's informational meeting, you'll be provided with the opportunity to ask questions in regard to the project, as well as to provide verbal comments if you'd like to include as part of the application record. So the site Chem facility is an existing solid and hazardous waste storage facility uh, and transfer facility that's located and operating since the 1980s uh, and it is at the corner of First Street and Third Avenue in Elizabeth. I pictured here a map that shows the location of the facility uh, as being approximately um, a little less than a mile from the interchange of the New Jersey Turnpike at exit 13. The facility is, occupies about 3.6 acres uh, of land that's located on block two, lots 864 and 865, and portions of lots 74 and 282 in the city of Elizabeth. Psychochem currently operates under a state style and hazardous waste permit number HWP 060001, which was issued on June 9th, 2017. The facility is currently permitted to store, treat, and transfer both solid and hazardous waste uh, in containers, tanks, and in bulk. Currently, these operations are done outdoors and undercover at the facility. We talk about this class three permit, which is the modification of the hazardous waste facility permit. The plan changes to the site camp facility are all linked to the proposed solid hazardous waste operating permit. And an application was made on April 12th, 2018 for a class three permit modification that proposed the following types of changes at the facility. First, the central change was that under the class three application, we requested to re replace and upgrade a previously approved solid waste transfer station building. So the construction of the new containment building unit which meets 
the federal US EPA requirements and standards has additional require has additional controls and environmental enhancements contained within those standards and regulations of design. These required features include an upgraded and state-of-the-art specifications for an air pollution control system, which is part of the pre-construction air permit that was submitted and is part of this public record. The original class three application also adds improved flood protection at the site by installing a, a full perimeter flood wall designed to meet the post -hur the Hurricane Sandy flood protection standards for this site. Cyclochem is also proposed to include a, an existing adjacent lot that was used for administrative purposes uh, to the facility to enhance traffic flow and vehicle and management. Most recently, on November 20th, 2020, the class three application was updated by CycleChem to include the following additional changes and enhancements. Number one, CycleChem proposed to relocate the physical location of the CBU by moving it, the building approximately 150 feet to the east, which allowed it to be set back about 100 feet further from uh, potential residential areas. To an open portion on the lot, the administrative lot, which is adjacent to the current operation of the facility. This was done to plan to avoid some planned uh, property easements that were creating restrictions on the construction of the building in its former location, um, but also provided additional environmental improvements. Generally, the shape of the CBU then changed from it was formerly a triangular shape, which we'll talk about in a minute. But however, the operating elements. Um, as well as the throughput capacity and the approximate size of the building remained essentially the same. The perimeter flood wall was also enhanced to include the administrative lot. So it was extended out uh, further at the site to provide flood protection to a larger area or a larger portion of the facility. Psychochem also proposed to extend their existing canopy cover to include outdoor storage areas to the north side of the facility where the CBU was previously located to provide additional cover and, and prevent stormwater contact of contained or storage containers. We also included in a truck wash pad and frack tank storage area that were done to allow the facility to clean out bulk containers and decanned liquids that would normally be managed within the containment building unit, improving the environmental controls at that site. So let's talk about the containment building unit. So the CBU was originally intended to replace the solid waste transfer building and covered the outdoor lab pack area located on the north end of the facility. It's a triangle shaped portion of property. It's outlined on the slide as shown in green and covered this uh, triangle shaped area uh, on, at the edge of the facility. The CBU was designed to meet the more re stringent requirements of the US EPA uh, with specific CBU standards that were put in place. The design and process throughput capacity of the CBU was similar to the existing solid waste transfer building unit that was already authorized under the permit and had no real significant changes 
in that facility uh, operating capacities. However, the building included a number of design features and environmental improvements that would have the, where the CBU provides higher grades of protection for the, the environment and to the, the public in general. The building design is also located um, in an area, was located in an area that provides um, additional traffic flow improvements so that we could have queuing of trucks off of local roads. Next slide. The intent of the class three application in the relocated area provided us with a slightly different design, although functionally equivalent to what was previously um, proposed in the original application submission. And this, the CBU is gonna be operated entirely on what is lot 864. Uh, again, it's approximately 150 feet over to the east of the original location. Uh, where the solid transfer building was going to be located, um, but also puts it 100 feet more distant from uh, residential areas um, at near the facility. The configuration of the CBU is rectangular rather than the triangular shape, which we showed in the previous slide. And the footprint of the CBU is uh, slightly smaller than the overall footprint of that triangular area in square footage, but a functionally uh, provides similar capacities for the site. Again, the CBU in the new location has actually been built to the same design operating criteria specified by US EPA for contained building units at hazardous waste facilities and still require the same state of the art environmental controls. However, we also added some additional controls in the final design that uh, would enhance the quality of this uh, building from uh, its final uh, construction. This location on the adjacent lot, 864, also provided some benefits uh, in terms of the improved traffic flow. We have better traffic flow across the site and provides uh, better areas for queuing, both inbound and outbound uh, for vehicles to make sure that there's less congestion on local roadways. So the, the CBU, again, is gonna also replace an existing bulk solidification and stabilization uh, area and move those operations into the fully enclosed structure to provide increased environmental controls of that processing facility. The environmental design controls include, but are not limited to, uh, full structurally integrated 10 inch thick concrete floor, which is to use as a wear surface, and sidewalls that are equipped with metal steel plates to improve usability and durability of the, of the unit. We also have underneath the building a full double composite liner system for secondary containment and leak detection for anything that is stored within inside the CBU. Underneath the liner system, there's also a sub slab, sub -slab foundation that provides another area of tertiary containment to minimize potential infiltration of water under into the liner system. It's also an air pollution control system for the entire unit that contains potential emissions from the processing and storage of waste within the unit. This this slide shows a elevation view of the newly proposed building. Um, 
we have five entrance doors located on the building, four of those for, for inbound materials, one for outbound materials. Uh, there's two silos located on the outside of the building, which are for containing reagents, these solidification agents uh, that they use in their process. Um, can are sometimes dusty, can promote uh, particulates into the air. The use of the silos contains and controls the distribution of the reagents so that they are minimized uh, the dust capacities. And this is also places it directly inside the building. So it's not, everything goes to the air pollution control system. The air pollution control system, which is shown here partially, um, it's located on the outside and then would uh, create emissions through a draw, induced draw, um, that would eventually go out to a stack after control measures. It would be a uh, side building that is used for office uh, and also to monitor all operations within inside the unit uh, and to deal with the management of traffic flow. Next slide. The liner system as depicted here is a complex one. Where we have originally is in the, the right hand corner of the slide. The floor of the facility has a 10 inch concrete slab that's underlaid by sand layer, then a, um, an 18 mil vapor barrier which then has, is on top of a drainage material, that's a geosynthetic drainage material, which then is on top of a thick 60 mil HDP or high density polyethylene liner system. This liner system would be similar to what's being used at the landfills today um, to provide control of potential leachate of uh, any materials that would come through the waste. This would be the primary liner or the top liner. Um, so that if any liquids got through the floor system that they're collected on this primary liner. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner of the slide, the thickness of the liner and how it's being drawn out um, for the uh, building underneath. This liner is called, a, it's gonna be called a composite liner because underneath this layer here, there is a synthetic clay liner, which will be placed underneath this. So that if there's any ever any kind of breach of this liner system, a full second liner is underneath this liner. And when you get potential for small pinholes in this liner, the actual clay liner slurs up to close up any potential holes that occur there. This liner system is then repeated again for a secondary liner system for leak detection of any liquids that might uh, breach through the primary liner, so into the secondary liner. And then there is a full slab underneath that liner system that has a, um, a water barrier material in there to prevent any waters from coming in from exterior of the building uh, into the liner system. Next slide. The building will have both a robust air pollution control system, including carbon absorption units and a bag house system. And these are typical shown here. So we'll talk about the air pollution control uh, permit. Uh, the air pollution control permits uh, addresses the operations uh, related to the treatment and storage of both hazardous and non-hazardous or solid waste with inside the building. Uh, the facility does not accept uh, type 10 waste or what would be traditional um, municipal waste at the facility, uh, rather that the facility has, may only take in house special uh, collections, household hazardous waste, uh, such as paints and other um, materials fertilizers that are collected at special household hazardous waste days. It's the only type of municipal waste uh, accepted at the facility.
but CCI manages mainly soils and industrial solids and sludges within the CBU. And these require solidification and or stabilization to make the material suitable for land disposal. So materials will come in, get treated at the facility, combined and then shipped off site for ultimate uh, landfill disposal. The air permit addresses the estimated emissions from the CBU based on worst case scenarios, meaning that we're looking at the highest level of processing at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So based on these worst case scenarios, the CBU is not considered a major source of air emissions. The CBU will be operated to have air pollution control emissions that may exceed the reporting thresholds in its current operations, which could include both particulate matter, volatile organic compounds and or hazardous air pollutants, which would be part of controlled emissions. The design of the CPU equipped with the state-of-the-art air pollution control system to keep the building under negative air and meets the EPA method 204 standard for permanent total enclosure. EPA defines the permanent total enclosure as a permanently installed enclosure that completely surrounds the, the source of emissions such that all VOC emissions are captured and controlled for discharge. So therefore everything that goes or happens with inside the building all get directed to the building's air pollution control system, undergo a, a reduction of uh, the pollutants prior to its discharge to the atmosphere. So this, the CBU has, is also designed with air curtains to ensure that the unit remains closed at all times when there's processing being conducted. So even when vehicles come into the unit, these air curtains will, go and, uh, will be on after the doors go up to provide a curtain of air that prevents waste or particulates or VOCs from exiting the facility and fit exactly around the uh, truck itself as it's moving through the doorway. The remainder of the air pollution control systems outlined here. So we have the primary building, which is meeting the method 204 requirements as a total enclosure. Materials are then taken inside of the process building, which remains closed during process and placed on either in the process floor or into one of these storage cells prior to uh, manipulating the materials. Materials that are in the cells for storage and processing where there's mixing that takes place with front end loaders um, are where we have already intakes for the air pollution control system as well as a sprinkler system over top of the, the units that uh, reduce air emissions by keeping the dust suppression down. Next slide. So the emissions that are collected through the air pollution control system first go to a baghouse unit. This baghouse unit has a high efficiency um, particulate removal system um, that provides a control factor or control efficiency of greater than 99.9% .9 for particulate matter that enter the uh, baghouse unit. So less than a tenth of a 1% of any particulates would go through the baghouse system uh, following its controlled emissions. Following the baghouse, the Emission, the air emissions will be going through two carbon systems, a primary carbon system 
to provide primary control of any volatile organic hydrocarbons through the system. Uh, that provides up to 90% control uh, at that primary level. And the air system then goes to a secondary unit, again, which operates in the same way. It's a carbon bed that absorbs um, volatile organic compounds, which then provides another 90% control efficiency, or overall between the two, 99% control regarding all organic emissions before it's discharged out to the atmosphere. So based on the application, again, assuming worst case scenario for operations at the highest processing rates, most amount of time with the control efficiencies that we provided with the air pollution control system, everything going to the air pollution control system. Um, we've done a first level risk screening, which is required by the New Jersey DEP to evaluate both long-term and short-term uh, risk effects for both cancerous and non-cancerous conditions from the hazardous air pollutants. Following the performance of this risk analysis, we've determined that all of the hazardous, potential hazardous air pollutants out of this system are meet the first level risk screening standards, which means that they are not going to increase any risk to the surrounding community and would result in less than one in one million um, increase in risk where it was considered insignificant uh, for any hazardous air pollutants that are emitted during the process. Building also is providing logistical improvements. As we've indicated previously, um, traffic flow has been uh, looked at significantly for the site to ensure that any trucks that are entering the facility can get off the roadways as quickly as possible. We have the ability to be able to uh, weigh vehicles as they're coming into the facility to ensure that there's a controlled inventory of the materials that come into the site. And the vehicles can then, once they're doing the waste scale, uh, come around and get queued on the site, um, awaiting to go into the building and actually deposit the waste uh, by dumping it uh, inside the containment building unit. So based on the design of the layout that we have here, we have queuing for all inbound trucking that can be done both in the turn of the, of the uh, driveway prior to the scale, after the scale, and also additional queuing areas to the side of the building and in front of the building uh, to allow us to use all four entry doors uh, into the unit for depositing uh, trucks in there. So it's got a, a great deal of uh, flexibility in that end. Outbound trucks can also use the same queuing area and use an interior um, <clears throat> roadway, which bypasses the scale that's on the, the exterior of the building. And they back into one uh, outbound load bay, uh, which is depicted here in red, uh, which has a scale already in it. So they would come in empty, back into that um, additional bay, uh, get loaded out, weighed, and then they can be uh, taken out onto the roadway. So it's efficient moving, moving of vehicles and should really minimize the impacts of traffic along First Avenue as well as Third Avenue. It's an improvement from the location that are currently operating. Next slide. The new perimeter flood wall. Talk about this. Next slide. So the approved perimeter flood protection wall will provide the ability to enclose the entire facility now from protection from potential floodwaters that would occur 
um, during any kind of a significant storm event. We've incorporated into the design of the facility um, the existing Army Corps wall. This area is already serviced by a protection, flood protection system that was put in place by the Army Corps of Engineers uh, on behalf of the city of Elizabeth um, back in the late 1970s. Um, that system has uh, levees that go up to Third Avenue. And then after that has an existing flood wall that follows in behind in the facility. This flood system now is gonna go in front of that wall, provides the most uh, up-to-date um, control systems, meets the new standards, which are post-Katrina, post-Hurricane Sandy standards uh, for the Army Corps. It has been reviewed by them. So the, this will also provide greater flood protection heights and areas where there's weave action potential um, and higher flood surge uh, in portions of the, of the site. So prior to Hurricane Sandy 2012, the majority of the facility was located above the flood zone um, where the base flood elevation at the site was eight to nine feet. Okay. And there was no moderate wave action uh, located on the site. Following Sandy, uh, Superstorm Sandy, um, the entire site now has a new base flood elevation of 11 to 12 feet, you know, a change of three feet in the base elevation. And we also have potential for breaking wave actions in a portion of the site that need to be addressed. Next slide. The approved design of the perimeter flood wall is going to utilize stacking plank systems for gate areas um, to allow these openings to remain open. And we're also installing reinforced poured concrete walls along the front edge of First Avenue primarily and the side of the, the facility that runs from First Avenue back to the existing Army Corps wall. Next slide. These flood flanking walls are designed by PS flood barriers, which had come up with this design following Hurricane Harvey back in 2017. Um, deployment of these units uh, allows these uh, aluminum planked walls to be put in place in a very quick fashion uh, with just a couple of individuals um, in response to a, a potential storm event. Significant storm events of these natures, we have um, early warning systems. So we have a procedure in place, emergency procedure for floods, potential floods, to let us know when the flood might be happening, that the facility can take measures then to install and erect the planking system at the flood gates where the flood walls remain in place so all the time, these floodgates can then be taken up or taken down to allow the facility to operate um, during non-storm uh, events. These systems have been used by the Department of Sanitation at the City of New York, it's used at the National Archives in Washington, D.C., uh, and numerous other locations. It's undergone um, fairly rigorous testing uh, in this system, so it's the, what is the new technology available to us? Next slide. So the status of necessary approvals, we have submitted in a flood hazard area um, verification and individual flood area permit, which has been issued by the New Jersey DEP for the flood wall design. So that's been completely approved by the department. We've also submitted an application, it was a 408 application to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who was acting on behalf of the city of Elizabeth to review the design system and to approve the walls to be abutted against the existing Army Corps um, flood wall that's already in place. We received full approval from that from the Army Corps of Engineers 
on behalf of the uh, city of Elizabeth uh, in November. The last thing we're waiting for is the class three modification for the hazardous waste permit, which is currently under review um, under a temporary authorization to allow this, the flood walls to be put in place. Likely this will be the first part of the construction that were planned at the site um, to ensure that these protections are in place um, for the upcoming uh, flood and hurricane season. Next slide. New stormwater permit application. Next slide. We indicated the, the breadth of these changes in uh, construction at the facility, uh, touched on several permits that are existing at the site. This new, the permit for the stormwater discharge is one of those that had gotten affected. So with respect to stormwater permitting, the facility was previously divided into two separate operations. One, there was an individual uh, stormwater permit that was issued for the areas where lots 865, 282A and 74, where the, the waste activities primarily occur at the site, was under that individual stormwater permit. The lot 864, which was an administrative lot, primarily had not had any activities done on it, was is under an existing general permit. We made an application to modify both permits um, to incorporate one individual permit that would include both uh, locations. So we have several handling areas as well as the CBU that are now gonna be in the, the lot 864. Uh, and those areas would now be subject to the individual permit requirements. The individual permits want to require stormwater for all the other areas at the site be collected and can be discharged. We have several waste handling areas that were not covered under the existing operations that are proposed to, to precipitation, which requires collections. This general permit requires discharge. Go to the next slide. With the addition of, lot of the CBU on lot 864, the transfer of the bulk activities out of the current area into the building, also adding in the several uh, canopy sections that are extending out, much more of the facility will be handled either indoors or under cover. So that all storage areas will provide better protection to ensure that waste don't get um, essentially discharge into uh, storm stormwater areas. The individual permit and general permit then are going to be combined to one individual permit. And then any remaining uncovered areas would then be utilized for temporary storage and handling of containerized waste only, which would provide improved best management practices at the site. The new permit's going to have five uh, individual outfalls for discharge points. Two of the outfalls, 04 and 05, are um, contained only just for roof drainage, so materials that don't fall onto any areas of the, of the site other than the roof of the buildings. Uh, two of the outfalls actually have runoff in contact with paved areas where there's no waste handling activities that take place. And then only one outfall has runoff from paved area where they made only minimal or temporary storage of potential waste materials in containers. This is a depiction of the drainage system at the site and how stormwater flow is now gonna be controlled under following the completion construction of the new containment building unit and you can see at the north end of the facility, we have an additional uh, canopy section that will provide the roof cover for container storage area. It's currently outdoors. Next slide. 
So that covers the application, again, uh, of what we're proposing to conduct at the site. If there's any questions that can be directed related to the application process or the requirements under the AO25 um, standards, uh, they should be directed to Mr. David Pepe. Uh, for additional technical questions related to the application or the management controls that we talked about here can be directed to my self. We also have a website location where this information has been provided uh, as well as a summary. And there will also be a recording of the public meeting that's being conducted today, public information session. Any questions, David? I have no questions, but thank you. It was very informative and uh, we look forward to comments that we receive. I really appreciate you complying with the spirit of the law and the AO 2021-25. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Then. As we indicated, I'm gonna leave the presentation uh, up and going for the amount of time that we're here. No one has come into the, um, to the meeting hall that we have uh, as of yet. We'll look to see if there's anyone that joins us before uh, six o'clock. And um, we'll also be here uh, if anybody actually joins us on Zoom and we'll resume and, and take any questions at that time. Hey, Michael, uh, do you have any questions for me? David, I, I think that we're okay. We're going to put together a packet at the end of the day to submit this in uh, to you that you'd ask for that to be done to you in like 10 days after the close of the public comment period. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then um, originally, and just because we were so early in setting this up, um, you know, I've had you on as, you know, receiving comments. So um, assuming that you haven't received any comments on our application as of yet. I have not. And as, there was another DEP person on as well. Yes, that was Connor. He is your, he's the air permit writer. He was attending uh, for a little bit. Yep. Okay. Um, and then uh, my my question was that the um, sorry I lost my train of thought there. Um, <clears throat> following after we we get this done, if there's any comments that come over, um, you'll provide them over to us. If we get comments too late, uh, I can I contact you if we need additional time to respond. Yes, so this is a 60 day comment period total, correct? Correct. Okay, yeah, if there's, if there's comments after, we can work on that. And then once you conclude the video recording, if you can send me as soon as you can so I have a copy of it for the record. Yes, we're actually gonna have the video recording up on the website. So you'll be able to click onto it from the website. So I just left it there for the the public to be able to access if they need it. Perfect. Well, you're doing a great job. I really appreciate all the time and effort that's gone into this. Uh, and I really appreciate you going through the motions of primal justice law. This is what the department intends for the community to be aware and educated and also provide an opportunity for comment on the facility. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you, appreciate your attendance. Zara, thank So we'll we'll be back in touch and talking to you, um, you know, throughout the time. And I'm sure I'll have more questions when we get together and put together our package. So just make sure we have everything together for you appropriately. Um, again, this facility have will have a couple things that are slightly different uh, than what you did with the because you changed the rules on me and a little bit in the game there. <laughs> at the end, but I tried to keep up with what was what was going on to make sure that we were 
more consistent with the uh, what the practices were. We might have just missed a couple of the uh, the initial things that you'd asked for, but um, just more timing, I think, more than anything else. So I understand, and and you know, we, we will we're going to make mistakes through this process. Uh, you and me both. So I totally understand, and and we're work through it together. And I'm always available. If anyone has any questions, feel you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, I'm here to help. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate All it. Right. Take care, everybody. Thanks again. Thanks.
Okay. All right, good evening. Anybody that's left over, we have uh, closing out the meeting. It's now at 6 p.m. Uh, for the Cyclochem public information section. Uh, no additional people have showed up or no one has showed up at the uh, um, public venue um, that we have and we've had no additional people in the um, virtual attendance. So we're gonna close out the meeting. Appreciate everyone's help and thank you very much for your time.